Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Italy once again and we've got another brewery who I've never tried anything from so I'm really looking forward to this one. There seems to be some really damn good beer coming out of Italy these days so it is always exciting to try things from some new breweries over there. So for this one we're going to go to Alessandria in Piedmont which is a little bit to the southeast of Torino, Turin, however you want to say it. And we're going to do my first beer review from Birificio Cane di Guerra. So this one basically means a war dog or dog of war. So quite an interesting one. This guy is a double IPA. It comes in at 8.2% ABV and uh, it was quite highly rated on rate beer. I think this one got a 92 or a 93 when I checked it out and it had four point something on uh, untapped as well so this one should be a pretty nice beer and of course a thank you once again to Sam at uh, Hippo Beers in Glasgow she recommended this one for me she said she tried a couple of these herself and that this brewery was one that I really should have a look at so yeah I'm sure it'll be quite a good beer then so anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery it will be very short for this one there wasn't too much information on these guys but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Birificio Cane de Guerra. This is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Italian beers that I've done for you before and that's being added to whenever I can and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review especially if you're watching from Italy but regardless of where you're from it's always great to hear from you guys and I thank you very much for the support that you guys show the channel so anyway to tell you a little bit about Cane de Guerra then so Cane de Guerra was started in 2015 by Alessio Allogatti a brewer who'd worked with various other Italian companies such as Bruton, Bira del Borgo, Toccalmato, Brufist and also Bad Attitude as well so he became interested in beer back in 2000 when he was on a class trip to Budapest in Hungary and uh, he and his classmates went to a brew pub and he was drinking some of the local pills there and he said this really kind of shows you what you can have instead of lager so he developed an interest in, uh, in craft beer and all of these sorts of things but um, in 2005 he started working for Bruton but in that period between between uh, 2000 and 2005 he found himself getting really interested in beer because he was working in the chemical industry so he started home brewing and then later decided that he wanted to get involved in the beer industry so he stopped working there and uh, found a job at Bruton I believe which was two 2005. So as I mentioned to you, the brewery's name is uh, War Dog or Dog of War. I'm not sure of exactly what the literal translation is, but it's one of the two. And the company is based in Alessandria in Piedmont in Italy, which is a little bit to the southeast of Torino. And I think that it's it's kind of in the middle of Torino and uh, Genoa to the south as well. So a very nice part of Italy, somewhere I do need to go and check out. But as I've told you many a time, the standard of the Italian craft beers is really quite good. You seem to get a mixture of breweries over there. Some of them seem to like to brew sour beers and Belgian style beers and others seem to enjoy brewing the more American styles. And these guys have got a few German beers as well. There was a Vienna Lager in there and a few other kind of interesting things like stouts and porters and stuff like that. So these guys seem to have a good mix of, uh, of beers that they produce. One thing I couldn't figure out about this brewery is whether they're a gypsy brewery or whether they actually have their own facility. One of the articles I read said they had a facility facility in an industrial estate in Alessandria but another one said they were a gypsy brewer so maybe they started off as a gypsy brewer and uh, they now have their own facility but from what I understand as well uh, Allo has a few of his friends involved in the company as well so this is maybe one to watch out for we've only just got their beers over here in Scotland but like I say it's always cool to try new beers from different parts of the world and the standard of Italian beer has it been pretty damn good in recent times but that's all you need to know about the brewery for just now uh, check out all the links to their web page and everything like that in the description below follow them on Facebook and all that and I'm sure you will see some interesting things because the brewer has a really good pedigree as you've just heard but let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then so quite an interesting kind of modern style of artwork there I'm not an art connoisseur by any means of the imagination I can just look at it and tell you if it's cool but as I said this one is their double IPA it comes in at 8.2% ABV and it should be really nice, Bira Italiana, or if you want to say craft beer in, Itali in Italian, it's uh, Bira Artigianale, as far as I know. You can see, kind of straightforward bottle cap on this one, just Cane de Guerra there, dog of war, war dog, however you want to, to kind of say it. But without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Oh, this guy doesn't want to open, there we are. 
So yeah, as you can see, a nice little bit of a smoky opening, some bubbles heading up towards the top there. And you can pick up a nice little bit of fruity character coming out of this beer. And that's going to be crystal clear as well, just look at that. So that's a really nice dark, kind of coppery colour, that kind of copper chestnut you note, but yeah, looks really, really nice. So I'll just bring that up. It's almost, yeah, it's got a nice coppery chestnut colour and it is crystal clear. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera, but if I stick my fingers behind the glass, you can see right through that. There's a solid finger of a frothy head on this one, and that's a kind of beigey cream colour you're getting off this one, the beer. It's got some nice, really nice fruity notes coming out of it, but there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall, it looks really quite nice. You can get some of these nice caramel and fruity notes coming off this beer just as you move it around. But let's have a little look at the aroma and see how we get on then. That smells quite nice. So straight away you're going to get some of that kind of floral aromatic hop out of this one. Yeah. You can really smell some of that nice sort of floral aromaticity. There's a little bit of a kind of green sort of grassy note to this one. You can just smell that sort of freshly cut grass in there as well, but it's quite a spicy floral aromaticity. You can pick up a little bit. There's a good bit of a kind of sweet boozy caramel in there. I'm getting quite a bit of a biscuity note out of this one, to be honest. But it smells quite nice. The fruity notes on this one are quite interesting too. So I can pick up a little bit of a sort of grapefruity note in there and maybe even a little bit of passion fruit or something like this. It didn't say on the website exactly what hops they were using in this beer. I think there's a wee bit of orange, but it's kind of a, it smells like a sort of straight up double IP. It doesn't smell like it's using a uh, mosaic or uh, citra or things like this. It does smell a little bit more like a kind of uh, one of these IPAs I've talked about, the kind of ones that give me a little bit of nostalgia from like 2010 and things like that. But it does smell pretty good. Just take a little bit of time, as I say, and enjoy the aroma. But the fruity side of this one for me, it's grapefruit. A little bit of passion fruit, I think, as well, and a bit of citrusy orange. I'm not getting some of these kind of lighter, more tropical notes that you get from the likes of Citron Mosaic, or indeed the kind of the array of New Zealand hops that you can get, but it smells kind of straight up. But yeah, it's got a nice sweet malty note to it, this one. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this one. So this one is the double IPA from Birificio Cani di Guerra from Alessandria Piedmont in Italy. Sante. Oh no, it's not Sante, it's uh, Salute. Mm. That's quite interesting that. I feel like an idiot now because I said salty instead of a uh, salute. Brain's not working today. But for this one, this leans more towards the malty side of things actually. It's quite interesting. As I always say, you should go the beer around your palate a little bit and take a few sips before you start analysing the flavour too much. But yeah, this is pretty nice. It's definitely a change of pace for a double IPA in comparison to what I'm used to normally. But yeah, with this one, there's a nice sort of pale malty malt base to this, but there's a good bit of a kind of almost a cereally spicy character to this. So. It's quite interesting and you can get some of the nice spicy floral aromaticity out of this one and that kind of mixes well with this sort of cereally malt base that the beer has. Yeah, that's a really nice beer this one. It's, it's definitely, that, that's a good way to sum this one up, it is definitely a change of pace to what you normally get from some of the uh, some of these double IPAs and stuff. It's the cereally character that's coming out of this one is really quite nice. It does remind me a little bit of some of the kind of traditional English beers that you can get, some of the bitters and stuff like that. It's, it's nicely done, but there's a lot of stuff going on in this one. So yeah, as I said, pale malty malt base. On top of that, there's this kind of cereally grainy character. It's not rye. It doesn't have the sweetness that you would expect normally from rye, I would say. But in the middle of the palate, there's a nice little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness. You can get a little bit of that biscuity sort of wafery note that you would expect. And there's a bit of a kind of darker caramel in there too. It's actually got a little bit of a toasted character there. And I do suspect that's maybe what's given the malt base just that little almost bitter kick that it has. But yeah, that's nice. You can feel that little bit of sweetness there. The malt base 
is where most of the complexity is in this beer. But it's definitely got a bit of a kind of dry bitterness to it. So it, yeah, as I said, the way to sum this one up is a change of pace from what you'd normally expect. And I think this beer, I'm sure on rate beer it had something like a 91, 92. But within the style, it was rated a 67, 68. So normally, while you can't date rate beer as, uh, you know, the Bible of beer, because I've encountered some ratings that I'm just like, that's completely wrong for this beer. Um, this one, I think it's kind of got it right on. It's a good beer, but it's definitely not what you would normally expect. That cereally malt base that it has is almost more akin to uh, an English style bitter than anything else. So it's got the hoppy character you expect to the IPA. But the malt base is far more in line with an English bitter or some kind of beer like that. In terms of the hoppy side of things, in the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthy hop there. As you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, you get a nice sort of floral aromaticity to this one. It's got quite a dankness to it, actually. I'm finding it's quite a, a dark floral aromatic character this one has. You can get a little bit of that spicy note in there. I don't think it's pine raisin. I think it's more of a spicy floral note that this beer has. Around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit uh, lighter and kind of grassy. It's that kind of note. And if you just go behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you'll get that little oily bubble where the nice kind of fruity notes come out of the beer. And it is really nicely done. So in terms of the fruits that you're getting from this one, I think there's a little bit of grapefruit in there. I would say, I think, yeah, definitely grapefruit. The, 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 that's kind of the linchpin of the fruity side of this beer. I think it's like in a nice dark grapefruity note. There's not much else going on in that. As the beer mellows out a little bit, you maybe start to get a little bit of a kind of orangey note from the beer. There's definitely not the passion fruit that I was picking up in the aroma. It seems to be a little bit more straight up grapefruit and I think just a little bit of orange but it's not such a distinct orange if that makes sense. It maybe is somewhere between orange and that sort of lemon grassy note that you can get from uh, from some of these beers. As I said it didn't say what hops were in this beer and sometimes that gives you an idea of exactly what to look for and it's always interesting to know that of course because you start to learn what kind of flavours you can get from hops when uh, when they're mixed together and things like that. But um, it is a nice beer, it's just definitely a change of pace on uh, on the double IPA style. I think the rating that it has on rate beer probably reflects it. As a double IPA, it's not one w within that style category, it's not one that's going to kind of blow your head off. It does have a little bit of quirkiness to it. The malt base on this, I would relate a little bit more to an English style bitter, but it certainly does have the kind of hoppy presence. To me, it just needs a little bit more kind of a uh, caramel malt, just to give it that little bit of sweetness, because you can feel a little bit of the booze in this beer. But that said, you can tell that it's a well-crafted beer. So, I mean, it's one of those things, if you want a straight-up double IPA, this one maybe isn't going to be for you, but if you like things to be a little bit quirky and a little bit different, then this is one that you definitely want to check out. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer, I would say... Um, I'd say it's mid-bodied, you know, the carbonation, it does have a little bit of a prickle to it, but overall it is kind of smooth. It's more of an oily mouthfeel that you're getting from this one. The malt base has a little bit of sweetness, but like I said, it leans far more towards that kind of a cereally, slightly bitter character. The hops have got a little bit of bitterness. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs, this beer, either. Um, but it does have a nice little hoppy presence. There's a little bit of fruity character there, but you can feel a little bit of the booziness in this one. And that maybe that kind of links into the the sort of malty feel that this beer has. It's only 8.2 percent, so it's not one of the heavier double IPAs that you're going to come across in my experience. So I think it's fair to summarise this review as the rating on rate beer for me. Uh, is probably a bit fair for this one, a sort of 92, 93-ish 90, that it has, but within the double IPA category, um, it, I think, yeah, about a sort of 7, 70. Uh, it's, probably, it's probably a good summary of this one, so it depends on whether you like your beer sort of quirky. As I said, the malt base on this is more akin to a, a sort of English style bitter, but I like this beer. I would drink it again. If I saw it on tap, I would certainly have this one. For me, it's always about trying different beers and trying different things. It's very rare, actually, that I drink uh, any beer more than once. Most of the beer I drink, of course, is on the channel, but for this one, it certainly does make me curious to try some of their other things. So I'll maybe have a go at one of their other IPAs and see how that one is, or one of their darker beers. As I always say, when you try a new brewery 
a good measure of what a brewery does is to try like an imperial stout and then try something on the hoppier side of things and that gives you a full idea of the scope of things that a brewery can produce but for this one it's certainly made me curious about some of their other brews so if you get the chance I do recommend that you check out Cani de Guerra from Alessandria in Piedmont in Italy. It's been really cool to review my first beer from these guys so I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer but yeah thank you once again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff this one was their double IPA hopefully I can review a stout or a, a lager or something like that something a little bit different in the fairly near future but let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below if you have tried it do let me know what your favorite beers are from this brewery as well and please do let me know some of the other italian breweries that you guys would like me to have a look at it's always great to hear from you guys and uh, yeah so thank you once again and i will catch you guys very soon make sure you check out cani di guerra from alessandra in italy they're starting to arrive over here in scotland now so maybe you guys watching in england and stuff will find them very soon but until the next time salute and i'll catch you guys very soon cheers